Hey guys, welcome back to part 21 of the Kotlin tutorial. So in the last video we learned how we can use varArg parameters to pass a variable number of arguments to a function. And your homework was to use this language feature to rewrite our getMax function so we can compare as many ints as we want with it. But we said that it should take at least one argument. So we create one normal parameter, let's call it first, and it is of type int. For the remaining ones we create a var arg, let's call it remaining, and it's also of type int. The function has to return an int as well, the largest value. And the logic for this function is a bit more tricky. We create a var max, which will contain the largest value, and we initialize it with the value of first, because this is the value we have in any case. And then we set a var arg is handled as an array inside a function. This means we can loop through it and then compare each value with our current max value. So let's call the single elements just i for i in remaining. So for each number in our var arg, we want to check if i is greater than our current max value, then i becomes the new max value. So now we start out with the first value, then we loop through the remaining values, compare each of them with the current max, and at the end of the function, we simply return max. So let's try it out. Print ln, get max. We have to pass at least one value, but the remaining ones are optional. And when we run this, it should print 11. Correct. Now it should print 50, 900, 4000, and this works. Just one more thing. If you ever want to pass a var arg as a named argument, for example because the first parameter has a default value, then you can do that as well. We can write remaining equals. But then we can just pass the values like this. This won't compile. Instead, we have to use the spread operator and then pass an array. This way we can use the named argument syntax. Just to keep that in mind. And the next video will be more interesting again. But first we have to cover one more boring topic. Because otherwise this could lead to some confusion. And your homework for this video is to not fall asleep till the end of the video. So we already learned about the scope of variables. We said that variables live inside the curly brace surrounded block they are declared in. This can be the whole function, like our max value here, that we declare at the start of the function, and then we can use it till the end of the function, but not outside of it. We can return its value, but we can't access this max variable anywhere else. And we can also declare a variable in a smaller block. We could for example create a variable inside this loop, and then it will only live for one iteration in this loop and it will be declared again at the start of each new round. From inside this loop we can access variables from the enclosing scope like this max variable here which we declared before the loop but not the other way around. We cannot access the a variable after the loop ended. We also call those local variables. But in Kotlin we can also declare variables at the file level outside of any function. So we can go up here, before our main function, and create a var, let's call it top level variable for example, and let's give it a simple string value. And then we can use this variable inside all our functions. So we can print it for example. As you can see the syntax highlighting is also different, to make it clear that this is not a local variable. And we can also do this in getMax. And of course, like any other var, we can assign it a new value. And when we run this, it prints this variable in both functions. And the way we have it here, we can even use this variable in other files throughout our project, not only in Kotlin Tutorial KT. An important difference to local variables is that top-level variables have to be initialized right away when they are declared. We can't split it up like we saw it earlier inside functions. So we can't write 
while top level variable is of type string and then initialize it later. Because of the large scope, the compiler can't know if we assigned a value to this variable before we try to use it. And unlike in Java, variables in Kotlin don't have default values. For a local variable, this is not a problem, because they can't be accessed outside of their function. So the compiler can easily figure out if we assigned a value to it and give a warning if we didn't. But top-level variables always have to be initialized when they are declared. And when we have a top-level val that contains deeply immutable data, we actually use a different naming convention. Immutable means that we can't make changes to whatever is in this variable. Remember, val only means that a variable is read-only. In other words, we can't assign a different value to it. But this doesn't mean we can't make changes to whatever object is already in there. As we saw in part 9 when we learned about arrays, there we put an array into a val and we were still able to replace elements in this array. But things like numbers or strings can't be manipulated directly. So in other words, the content of this variable will never change. And then instead of camel case, like we have used for variables so far, we write it like this. All caps, with the single words divided by underscores. When we divide each word with an underscore, we also call this snake case. And when it's all caps like this, it's also called uppercase snake case. And we've actually already seen this naming convention before when we looked into the primitives kt file. And then we also refer to this not as a variable, but as a constant. So let's rename it once again with shift F6. Let's call it string underscore constant. And let's change the string to a I am a constant. And when we look closely, we can see that we have another gray underline. And when we hover over it, it says might be const. So we click on it, then we click on this little light bulb, and then we use this quick fix, make string constant const, which adds this const modifier before val. So what is the difference between a normal val and a const val? First of all, the const modifier makes clear to other developers that this is supposed to be a constant. So it's less likely that someone accidentally changes it to a non-constant value. That in itself is already useful. But by prefixing while with const, we also create a so-called compile time constant. This way we tell the compiler that this value is not meant to change. And what then happens is, whenever this variable is used somewhere in our project, instead of using the actual variable, the compiler just goes ahead and inserts the value directly. So when we use our string constant somewhere in our code, the compiler will just insert I am a constant and ignore the variable. This makes the code more efficient, and for this the compiler enforces some additional constraints. First of all, only a very limited set of types is allowed for constvals, that is string, and our eight primitive types, byte, short, int, long, float, double, char, and boolean, because they are deeply immutable. And we can also not assign the result value of a function call or a normal variable to a constval, because those are evaluated at runtime. And they could also return different values each time our program runs. But we can use literals because they are fixed. And we can also use basic operators like plus and minus. Of course, we can also not declare a const while inside a function. Because again, functions are executed when the program is running. And variables declared inside the function only get their values assigned to them then. And of course, a const can also not be used on a var because a var can be reassigned. At the moment, the const modifier can only be used on vals. And the compile time constant can also be used in some places where a normal val can't, but this is beyond the scope of this video. There are situations where you don't want the variable replaced with the actual value by the compiler, because this can make problems when you need to update it. This is why the const modifier has to be added to val explicitly, and it's not automatically inferred. For you right now, the best practice is to just use const val whenever you need to create a constant with a string or a primitive type. And for Java developers, this is the equivalent of a public static final string. Okay, this topic was rather boring. The next video will be more interesting again. Nevertheless, it was necessary. So please leave a like if you learned something. And then we see us in the next part. Take care.